Uh, Representative Martwick, uh, could you uh, inform me, what is the deadline for passage of amendments to the state constitution? Um, my understanding, Representative, is that the in order for a referendum, a constitutional referendum question to be placed on the ballot, it must be passed at least 180 days before the date of that election. So the election would be November 2020. This would be roughly six months before then. So we are um, almost uh, a year in advance or perhaps 11 months in advance of the actual deadline for moving this forward, correct? Yes. Now, are you aware of any of the other 48 constitutional amendments that have been uh, filed uh, this legislative session? Are any of those amendments yet to move forward? Have any of those amendments been released from the House Rules Committee or the Senate Committee on Assignments? I am not aware of that. None of the amendments have been released. Maybe that's because they're premature. Maybe that's because they're ideas uh, that don't meet uh, the support of the majority party. Um, Representative, it was mentioned the uh, issue of rate setting. Is it your intention that rates would be approved by the legislator and submitted to voters in advance of consideration of this amendment? So the, the, uh, there are rates um, that have been filed. There was a hearing on them uh, in committee and um, I, be I, I believe that the intention is that those rates, uh, that there will potentially be a vote on that before we adjourn. And if rates are established by the legislature, if voters approve this constitutional amendment, what guarantees will be in place to those voters that the rates established in this legislative session would be the effective rates going forward after passage of the amendment? So, Representative, um, the, those would be the exact same protections that are there today. Um, since the passage of our income tax in 19, or institution of our in income tax in 1970, if memory serves me, there have been roughly four increases in our tax, um, in our flat tax. There have been two decreases in our flat tax. So the flat tax has uh, had very little movement over the course of the 40 years that it has been in effect. Is exactly the point of why the unified tax structure is so important, because it acts as a very powerful disincentive to a continued adjustments and manipulation of tax rates to feed the whims of the General Assembly and the appetite for spending, the lack of fiscal discipline that your opening comments emphasize uh, that have been such a problem for our state. One more question. Will this amendment allow for the establishment of additional types of income taxes, whether they are supplementary income taxes passed by the legislature or local income taxes uh, implemented by home rule units of government? Uh, I, I, I don't believe so. I think what you're referencing is the fact that when they created the language, and in fact, I have the minutes of the Constitutional Convention when, when this was done, there was a language that was put into the amendment that limited it to one tax. There shall only be one tax, and this removes that. That language, if you read the actual comments from the convention, was done to prevent uh, a backdoor uh, uh, graduated rate structure. So this is literally what needs to be done legally to permit a graduated rate structure, but it is really no different than it is today by simply declaring other types of income as taxable income, we could bring those in. So it really wouldn't change anything on that front. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the bill. This amendment opens the door to really limitless spending here in the state of Illinois. And I'm uh, really thinking about Memorial Day today as many of our families are traveling outside of the state of Illinois. They're traveling to visit their family members who have left us because the state of Illinois leads the nation in population loss. And why is that? Is it just our weather? Uh, no. Every state around us is increasing with jobs and population gains, and they're doing well because they have made a decision to invest in economic growth and create a business climate that is favorable for job creation. This is a blank check for poor spending. This is giving more power to the very most powerful in our state. I strongly urge it.